Hey, it's all with your reminders for this coming week in Warcraft. Help us out by hitting the like button, subscribing for more coverage, catching me live on Twitch, and let's get to it. A few hot fixes from last week should please a few folks. Blood Death Knights got an 8% buff to their damage across the board. Beastmaster Hunters and Assassination Roads got a sweeping 5% buff. Fire Mages got a 10% buff to many of their main abilities and a modest 5% buff to Pyroblast. Brewmaster Monks, Arms, and Protection Warriors got some significant damage buffs to their rotational abilities. The Dark Moon Fair is in town, so be sure to drop by for the monthly profession quests and buffs to reputation and experience. Meanwhile, the Pet Battle Bonus event is happening this week. It's not a big deal unless you're in Europe because June 11th is Super Squirt Day. This is a great time to quickly power level snail pets and try selling those on the auction house. Collecting high level snails is acknowledged by the drug bar down in Zerlet Caverns and lets you progress towards their best rewards from the snail racing even faster. But before we continue, I gotta take a second to thank the sponsor of today's video, Ridge. They're in the middle of a massive Father's Day sale and you can save up to 40% off your purchase. Just go to ridge.com slash soul to see what they gotta offer. I've featured their many wallets and key cases, but I also wanna show you their selection of matching rings. Yes, that's right, Ridge also makes rings in the same minimalist style and come in carbon fiber to match my wallet, tungsten carbide, 24 karat gold, and titanium. They even offer added services in case you lose your ring or get it resized. This along with a wallet make for a great Father's Day gift or heck, just for any occasion, just take advantage of the sale. It's a great reminder that you love them and maybe they belong to you, I ain't gonna judge. But whatever the case, check out ridge.com slash soul. There's some great products up on their site and there's some really big savings. If pets are not your thing, maybe gear is. This week is the dungeon event where more loot drops at the end of a regular or heroic dungeon. On top of that, you can complete 5 dungeons on mythic or higher difficulty as part of a quest to get to what I expect to be hero class gear, which starts at an item level of 428, upgradable to 441 with the right materials. Something that was pointed out to me the other day that I want to share with you is a way for players who only run group content as difficult as Raid Finder to slowly progress towards an item level of 437, and here's how. It involves this vendor who takes these aspect tokens of merit. This is earned if you happen to not see anything cool in the Great Vault in a given week and you want a consolation prize. From this vendor, you can purchase Worm Shadowflame Crests. This is used to upgrade champion and hero gear to an item level of 437. You can also take three of these and turn them into an enchanted crest to craft or recraft gear to 437. Let's say you run a full raid finder, which this week you can start doing, and there's nothing in there that you like. That means the following week you're going to get six tokens, with which you can buy the crests from the vendor and knock yourself out. Champion gear is not easy to get for non-Big 3 players. Outside of raids and Mythic Plus, you can get one piece by completing the weekly heroic dungeon quest. There's the world boss if you're lucky, and if you can manage to fully complete the expedition research event once a week, champion gear can be earned there too. Using this vendor will let these players break past the 424 barrier and get access to some heroic level gear, which will obviously ruin the game and make your efforts feel pointless, I'm kidding. As I mentioned this week, the third wing of Raid Finder will be available, and without a moment to spare, as the following week will release the Creation Catalyst. Let's take a look at some of the cool stuff that drops from these two new bosses. There are tier tokens for the helmet and shoulders, making all five pieces available starting this week. The Shadowflame Tempered Armor Patch recipe is said to be the best DPS embellishment in the season so far. The Ward of the Faceless Ire is a powerful defensive trinket that turns a tank buster attack into something to kind of laugh about. The Igneous Flowstone is a ranged DPS trinket that'll affect positioning to maximize its effectiveness. Ash Kandor is a crazy two-handed strength weapon with a strong effect. And finally, there's a round of trinkets that have different effects depending on your class. They're very powerful, but also have a bit of a side effect that just might get you killed. Since I mentioned it, now's a good time to start hoarding gear for use in the Creation Catalyst, which opens next week. I'll have a more detailed guide out later, but basically, you want to hold on to your eligible gear so you can transform it for the sake of set bonuses or transmog. So how do you know what is or is not eligible? Here are the basic rules. If it was obtained through any raid difficulty or Mythic Plus or rated PvP, it qualifies. If it's part of the Suffused set, which is gear found in Farrakh Assaults, it qualifies. And that about covers all of it. So if you haven't already, consider taking a look at the item restoration service over on the Battle.net page for an opportunity. Over in Mythic Plus World, there is a bit of a shakeup this week with Fortified, Afflicted, and the early return of Raging. 
Afflicted made its debut this week, and it jolted groups who take fewer considerations over if there's at least one additional cleanser in the group. Thankfully, raging isn't much of a thing, so groups could get accustomed to what to do. Classes who couldn't cleanse considered this a week of basically no affixes. More than a few healers must have stressed out, and protection paladins got to flex their capabilities over their equally talented but not really counterparts. With the repeat of raging, it's anyone's guess what's coming up this week. We haven't seen volcanic, sanguine, or bursting. Odds are we're going to see a combo using Volcanic with either Sanguine or Bursting as the second affix, and neither of those combinations aren't what I'd consider to be especially dangerous. But will it be this week, or will we see other repeats? With the official Diablo launch going on this week, it's going to dominate in a lot of circles and social media. I myself will be streaming the launch a few hours after this recording goes live, and I would be honored to be a streamer that you would support for a cool mount. A Diablo mount, not a WoW mount. But this week in WoW is still pretty busy, with additional access to raid bosses and items and more just around the corner, including a new patch with a dungeon and DPS specialization, the kind that we've never seen before. It's exciting, and I hope you'll join me for the fun, the reactions, and more. So please hit that like button, subscribe for more WoW coverage, catch me live, and I'll catch you later. Here's the original closer, stay safe, stay healthy, and stay breezy. You start in town, get the bother with then you head down, check and notice but there are not ten. Then you do a circle round the aisles, help and grab it for a while. Do a hunt, cook, soup and some bounties. Do it for some dungeons, stop in the visions, help in the dragon nations. But in the end, you're just a gamer, you're just trying to get the big reputation. Big reputation, ooh, you and me were fighting big reputation. Ah, that's the thing we're really trying to do. I want some transpog too. Done.